Hey, this is Necro Butcher from Mayhem. You're watching Metal Shop TV. It was uh, Telok came up with the, the, the title. Uh, he had written, um, I think it was eight songs. <coughs> uh, many of them were in the same context as the title album, uh, also the title of the album. And uh, since I didn't write it, and he did, I can't go into too much details, but it was something he said about going a little bit old school. Uh, uh, with that, and uh, so his eight songs are connected. And then, luckily, <coughs> we also had the chance to contribute. So Attila wrote the lyric, I wrote the lyric, and uh, Hellhammer wrote also a lyric for the album. Um, and that's uh, um, yeah. Of course, Otto also arranged the vocal arrangements. Uh, some of them uh, were directed by um, Telok. I tried to direct uh, the one lyric I had, but uh, you know how to when you. Uh, it's better to give artists more freedom to express themselves and if you tell them anything then they will maybe don't feel as free and, and uh, so I kind of regret that. It, it turned out great but, uh, but uh, yeah. Not so much more to say than that uh, this album is, ex first of all I'm extremely proud of it. It's our best album since 2004. Um, production is great. Um, we have our uh, front of house guy, <clears throat> been with us for many years now. He produced and recorded the album. So um, everything came together really nice. Um, <clears throat> the artwork, um, what can I say? Just f fantastic artwork. And uh, we, uh, and also, <clears throat> the last two albums have not been, um, how to say, maybe not so live friendly, more technical, maybe better to listen home type of music. Well, this album is a little bit more live friendly, <clears throat> and uh, and because of that, uh, I, uh, I was looking forward to start a tour with this album. And uh, now we uh, started the world tour. We are on our 16th gig here in Prague now, and we'll continue for the next two and a half years to finish the world. It's about 200 concerts in about 60 countries that has to be covered. Uh, that's a very common question I have from uh, journalists. Uh, uh, and so there must be something to it. I think that uh, the um, both Gul and Telok um, after being on, road, on the road for three years uh, <clears throat> with this album, might have been subconsciously um, uh, also. I don't think they intended it to sound like that, but uh, it it may have kind of influenced them in some way um, and uh, I don't really see that I don't really see it myself maybe it's just because I'm in the middle of it 
But like I said, uh, it's the best album we did in 16 years. Uh, and uh, if you compare it to Mysterious Stones of Holland, uh, one of our proudest moments, uh, I would just say thank you. Every track is special on this album. I love them all. Some have parts which I particularly like. Um, <clears throat> some have lyrics I particularly like. The song you refer to uh, is a great song. And um, it's actually picked by a producer. He wanted to do it. He wanted that song. So, it, so uh, and for his artistic freedom, we gave him that song, basically. Uh, it could have been any of the others. Uh, but, uh, so it's, it's, it, it's more random. Uh, it's uh, convincing that that song ended up uh, as the video. And like you said, we never made any videos before. And that's mainly because <clears throat> every time we come to the stage where we release an album and, and we want to, or we start to think about video, and then we are four or five, we have been four in the band, now we are five. We all have different ideas about how it's supposed to be done, and then end, because we could never agree on anything. So this time we had some external producer who did it. And uh, I know Telok was there to oversee uh, the, uh, the video shooting, but um, other than that, I actually don't know. Uh, we gave them uh, artistic freedom. And to tell you the truth, I haven't even seen it myself yet. I've been very busy on tour and uh, I have a sleeping disorder and uh, just trying to survive. The two previous records, <coughs> for, <coughs> let's take Odo, Odo Ad Chaos first, written by Blasphemer, the whole thing, um, of course some drum arrangements uh, made by Hellhammer, some vocal arrangements made by Attila, but it's basically a one-man thing. And same thing happened with this uh, historic warfare. <clears throat> it's Telok uh, wrote the album. Um, so uh, that I think that's what differs the most this time is that all everybody was in on it. And uh, when recording it, I've had the <clears throat> feeling that uh, it sounded like live in live in studio suddenly like back from the in the 80s uh, so that's that's the biggest difference i can see uh, myself on the last three albums yes i never evaluated where I am or what I'm doing. I just do what I'm, what's natural for me. And what, what was natural for me was to start a band when I was 10 years old, 12 years old. I had my first concert when I was 13. I started Mayhem when I was 16. <clears throat> so uh, never stopped to think about anything in this kind of ways, just did what I felt natural to me and what was necessary to do. Um, that's basically what I can say about that. There is thousands of albums being made and there's so much music and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a big music fan, music is my life. Uh, I wake up in the morning to music, I go to bed in the night to music. I have different moods, I have car music, I have washing up music, I have party music, making love music, anything. 
music to everything. And, um, and uh, when you say, am I still connected with the black metal or, you know, I, am I still on the ground? Uh, do I follow what's going on in the black metal scene? I listen to everything that I have time for, but to tell you the truth, a lot of the music I listen to is the old, my old uh, records that I have personal feelings for and uh, won't and suddenly feel urged to listen to Left Hand Path from Entombed or, uh, you know, could be anything, could be Ministry, could be Depeche Mode, could be uh, Rolling Stones, even uh, Beastie Boys. Now I'm just mentioning some of my favorite bands. Uh, uh, when it comes to the newer, darker uh, metal, <clears throat> some of these people, um, we have op opening acts. And this is a good way for me to get to know new bands personally, because we travel with them and also by seeing their shows because you have to sacrifice a little bit, uh, especially for complex music, you have to sacrifice to be able to understand the music, especially if it's fast, hard, and, and uh, let's say noisy. And, uh, and you have to give it some spins, you have to listen to it several times, and to, to, uh, to give an artist the, the possibility uh, it's rarer and rarer because I have hundreds of favorite albums that I rather listening to than ordering music uh, that I don't know. But I have, I'm recommended a lot of music that I do listen to. Um, and I have some people who, who knows me. So when they call me and say, hey, I got a great album, you have to listen to this. And then sometimes I find new music in this way. <clears throat> so it, yeah, it's basically like that. I'm, I'm following, kinda, I think, you know. Uh, but uh, not like back in the days where we had this, when the, when the metal was young and uh, we were going to the, I remember there was a company from Sweden called Sip. We ordered uh, just by the name of the band like bulldozer that sounds pretty cool voivod hmm, that sounds pretty cool too so we ordered these albums day of wrath you know and uh, war and pain just to, to mention two albums uh, become two of my favorite albums ever so, so so this is the way we did it back in the days T today also uh, some bands sense uh, uh, do covers from Mayhem and are um, and send me their uh, their cover versions, which I really appreciate <clears throat> to hear other musicians take on on uh, our our music. That that gives me a kick and that opens up also uh, a passage into me listening to a new band. Like for example, there's some new bands from Estonia. There's some new bands from Belgium that covered uh, Mayhem, which I would never have uh, probably found if they didn't contact me to ask to permission to, to, uh, to record one of uh, the songs I have written. I can't really say there's so much, uh, and that's why I started to write books about it because uh, so many people um, put out actual lies uh, sometimes to make themselves look better uh, for historical reason, reasons and, and stuff like that uh, or it could be people remember wrong people even have false memories so my cameras I played with in, uh, in my band uh, has, I mean, like for example, we are sitting down in the bar or whatever and we're talking and they say something like, yeah, this and this happened and they look at me and they say, hey, isn't that right, Jörn? And I'm like, well, you know what, 
it's not exactly how I remember it. In, and this is a way to say, well, you're full of bullshit. Well, since this is not a, a sunshine story, uh, I never liked uh, the fact that anybody should come in and 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 uh, make movies, uh, especially if they didn't contact us first and didn't give a, didn't care about any details or just <clears throat> and stuff like that. Uh, and there's been a lot of documentaries been made, and and uh, so I'm very, I was very skeptical, as always. And I can tell you right away that the <clears throat> first time I heard about uh, this Lords of Chaos movie was a Rolling Stone magazine called me in the morning. There's a time difference in LA and Norway, nine hours. So I, I'm a little bit grumpy in the morning sometimes, and I, so they, they say, yeah, yeah, what about this movie, Lord of Chaos? And I'm like, what are you talking about? Uh, but just uh, tell these people to tell uh, Hollywood to go fuck themselves. And they say, ah, can we quote you on that? And I said, yeah, absolutely. So it started out that way, and then uh, I met the producer. Jonas Åkerlund turned out to be the old drummer of an uh, old favorite band of mine, Bathory. And a great guy and a movie geek. Um, and, you know, made great videos for all the bands. <coughs> and uh, so I got actually a little bit curious about uh, what, what a guy like that could uh, do with the story because he had some preferences. <clears throat> he was in Sweden when it happened, so he followed the media uh, uh, also. Um, but the problem for me was that it was based on the Lords of Chaos book. So when I met him, I said to him, well, you know what? Uh, or actually what happened is when the book came out, my book, Death, the Death Archives, the first guy I sent it to, where I asked the, uh, my, uh, my editor to send it to Jonas Oklund to, to, make, to, to, to try to make him understand what, went ha what, what, what happened, you know. And, um, and then we met, and then we had meetings, and then in the end uh, I saw the movie, and, uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah. To tell the truth, uh, uh, it made me very sad. Uh, it was, it's a, it's a sad movie, you know. But sometimes, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, there's beauty in sad, in sadness too. And. Um, but uh, I'm, I must say that after the first time I saw it, I felt completely numb, empty. Uh, had this, yeah, it was kind of, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's another word for me, trying to say that I've, I've, it all came back in a very bad way for me. So, um, about the impact of the of the the thing uh, on us uh, on mayhem, it was uh, very it was extremely uh, a, uh, a lot of magazines and TV stations and stuff that called me because there was some, they smelled some sensation, LA Times, Daily News, BBC, CNN, ABC, all everybody. Even National Geographics, you know, it was, went completely crazy. And I told all these people that, you know what, I don't want to give the faucet on what's right and what's wrong, and you know. Uh, I like the people to see it first, and then when you see it, then you can call me back with some intelligent questions about the movie. And then guess what happened? Nobody called me afterwards.
Yeah, of course. Of course, I remember that. Um, <clears throat> it was a band I had called Mösta, which means black in Finnish. Um, we played uh, we, a couple of cover songs, uh, a Motred cover, and uh, a couple of songs we made ourselves. You know, next to our uh, rehearsal place, actually, which was an uh, old school where uh, where I grew up, in the gymnastic uh, uh, room in the school where there was a stage and uh, <clears throat> and they had this thing for young bands and uh, we uh, was asked if we were interested and we were and uh, arrived there and um, don't remember if I was nervous or anything but uh, what I do remember is I met uh, Thomas Seltzer, Happy Tom from Turbo Negro there. He had a band called Akut Inleggelse, which means uh, that you are taken straight to the emergency uh, psycho ward. And I remember he was playing his uh, Rickenbacker, but his technique was so bad, so he started to bleed uh, on his hand. And I was thinking, fuck, this is cool as fuck, you know, this punk rocker giving hell, you know, and with his crazy name of the band and everything. Um, don't remember so much more about it actually. I mean, this is many years ago. This was in the ninety. Let's see. It was must be ninety eighty one or two. Around that time. First thing that comes to mind would be, and I'm sure I pronounce it wrong, Urquell, the Pilsner, which is one of my favorites. Um, uh, one of the first times I played in Prague, I lost my bomber jacket in a bar, got drunk. Um, many years ago. I don't even, I think maybe 20 years ago or something. 99 maybe? Check it out. Do the roller text. I don't, I can't right now remember. Um, it used to be uh, somewhat cheaper than some other European countries. Now when you join the Euro, so on, everything seems to be the same. I see <clears throat> some of the stores and stuff that you had, the special national thing is more disappeared now. It's Mercedes, uh, Lidl, Aldi, it's everything, it's BP, Shell. Unfortunately, it's the, glo uh, the globalization taking over uh, a lot of the uh, national um, um, uh, sp uh, sp uh, special things uh, from, uh, from nations. Um, let's say, of course I love playing at the Brutal Assault Festival. It's a great festival. Tomas is a good friend. Oh, let's see what else. Uh, can I say that? Yeah, you have beautiful women over here. Can't really come up with anything else right now. I'm sure later on I would uh, think that fuck, I should have told you guys that this and this, but this is what I came to think of now. They can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs>